Kamen of Shabi, more Kamen Rider, I'm so excited. Common Rider is about I don't know. And Common Rider W is I don't know even more. But what I can tell you is that the specific Common Rider figure is actually a master grade model kit, which means you have to build it and paint it. Which reminds me, the painting. <laughs> the sculpting on this model kit is awesome. Apparently, this character, Common Rider XL, is a side character in Common Rider W. And for a side character, I have to admit, he has a really cool design. He looks a lot more mechy than most Common Riders, if that makes sense. And that's partly due to the intentional bits of kibble. And kibble in this context means alternate mode bits that are obviously visible. But you more eagle-eyed viewers will notice that the wheels on his calves are missing in some shots, as is the crotch handlebar. If you're a normal, functioning human being, this wouldn't even bother you in the least. But if you're a hardcore Common Rider fan, you might want to get those death threats ready. Maybe you should go ask the guy who's trying to find out where I live. Fuck off. A little note about the tires, they feel like actual rubber, which is a very nice touch. So this guy looks so cohesive and feels so solid that I sometimes forget that I built it with my own two hands. The building process of this model kit was really fun. There's a lot of pieces as you see in my unboxing videos, and if you didn't watch it, link in the description. But despite the abundance of pieces, the build was relatively easy, and it took me about two hours. And as straight out of the box builds go, this thing looks great unpainted. Most of the model kit is molded in this shiny plastic that kind of simulates a metallic finish. By no means is it perfect, you get that ugly plastic swirl in some areas, but if you're one that doesn't want to paint your model kits or don't have the time for it, you can get away with not painting this kit. But the inner autism in me wants that authentic metallic cherry red finish. I'm gonna have to paint the kit to get that. And despite most of the figure being molded in the correct color plastic, there are some areas that require a oh! master grade kit. This guy has a disappointingly large amount of stickers, and the stickers cover some important parts too, so it's a little harder to get away without using them. So that cool little screen on the crotch handlebar, that's a sticker. This little design on this USB stick, that's a sticker. And even this creepy looking mono eye in the helmet is a sticker. Looks very accurate to the TV show from what I've seen. So anyway, I was talking about the stickers. There's a lot more where that came from. So the figure comes with this really awesome looking gun sword. Unfortunately, <laughs> most of the important detail on this thing are covered by stickers. But anyway, you could plug this into his hand, wrap his fingers around it, and that looks really good. And the sword has a cool little feature where you can untab this part and split it open. And removing this red cap allows you to remove this other USB. USB. And on a side note, these kind of stickers I don't have a problem with at all, because this kind of detail is almost impossible to paint. However, I would have preferred if they were dry transfer decals or water slides, but you know, that's just me. And you get this cool little flip phone thing that contains yet another USB. I guess you gotta have some way to store all that information, if you know what I mean. And this thing does look nice, but unfortunately, it's mostly a sticker. I don't understand why Bandai couldn't have just molded this part in blue. And I mean, look at this shit. Who honestly thinks this is a good idea? Fuck you. But there's more to this little thing than meets the eye. That's actually a separate part. Such a missed opportunity here. You could have had me build a tiny little transforming flip phone. That would have been awesome. But in the long run, these things don't really matter. Let's get to something that... Uh, ball joint at the head. Ball joint at the base of the neck. Can look up really far and look down that far. Rotation at the shoulder. Shoulder pad moves out. Arm moves out. And for a model kit, this guy has quite the durable bicep swivel. Bend at the elbow. Up and down at the wrist. Rotate the peg and you get some side to side. Joint ball joint at the thumb. Ball joint at the trigger fingers. Can bend at the middle. And the last three fingers are all connected, but they can bend independently. But it's completely possible to split them to get some independent fingers, exactly like the Master Grade Zaku. Ball joint at the chest allows an arcing back and a crunch. And the bigger the ball joint, the bigger the swoop. This part can move, but unfortunately, no rotating handlebars. But we could always pretend. <laughs> Yes, that was my mouth. Rotation at the leg. Can't move back that far. Beautiful spread. <laughs> swivel here. Double bend at the knee. There's a swivel in my boot. Wheels on the calf can't rotate, but let's be honest here. Up and down at the ankle. A beautiful pivot. And a toe bend. And to wrap up the posability segment. <laughs> posability on this kit is fantastic. But you gotta watch out for those tiny feet because sometimes, yeah, there it goes. Luckily, the model kit has an included stand. Remove this belt cover, replace it with this piece, and there you go. Nice and stable. And the stand can even extend. Rotation here. And move up and down. Uh, yeah, this thing is kind of useless when it comes to aerial poses. But I managed to get this, so you know, there's hope. So this model kit is supposed to be in 1 8 scale, which means this guy is actually pretty dang big. He towers over the Figma Madoka Kaname, SH Maserat's Godzilla, Masterpiece of the Miz Prime, the Master Grade Zaku, and my last Kamen Rider review, the Tiny Headed Hibiki. So out of both of these Kamen Rider figures, this guy is winning out so far. And he gets even more brownie points from me because he actually transforms. But not without some extra parts. Yeah, this guy is kind of a parts former. But in this case, I'm a little more forgiving. And that's because of, uh... I'll just shut up and you'll see.
we have the bike form. And does anybody else think this is kind of fucked up? And as you saw, the parts forming is necessary in this case because the tires magically get bigger. But let's not get too far off topic. What the fuck? It's just a guy with tires attached to him and he's kneeling down with a saddle and some restraining devices. <laughs> I guarantee that someone in the world is silently fapping. Probably while crying. And it gets even more disturbing because if he had another Master Grade Kamen Rider kit, he can mount this disgusting man bike. Kamen Rider fans, please tell me how this is okay. And since I don't have any other Kamen Rider Master Grades, this doesn't look that great, but this actually looks pretty cool. And you know what? Despite the disturbing imagery, this thing is actually pretty fun. I mean, it's really solid. It can roll really well. Not really, no. It looks cool just as long as you don't notice it's a fucking guy on his knee. I gotta calm down a little bit. Let's do some size comparison. Madoka Godzilla Prime, Zaku, and Hibiki. Let's just get this yeah. out of my sight and give it the final verdict. Overall, this figure is awesome. While Kamen Rider may not be my thing, I can't deny that this model kit is an extremely fun figure. And even if the bike form is a little questionable, I'm sure Kamen Rider W fans will love it. And for some reason, this model kit has an extremely low rating on Amazon. I guess some people found issues with the plastic quality, but there's no such thing on mine. You won't break it as long as you don't do what I would do. And I also gotta give a big thank you to Sam Durham. Thank you so much for providing this figure. I actually revealed this model kit in my first P.O. Box unboxing video. And this review was a long time coming, so sorry about that, I guess. And if you wanna wait three years for a review in your name, go ahead and send me figures to my P.O. Box. That's P.O. Box 329, Norwalk, California, 90651. And if time doesn't allow me to review your figures, take comfort in the fact that you'll get to see them in my P.O. Box unboxing. Link to the newest video in the description. So guys, the next review is something that I've been looking forward to for a long time. Why do I keep doing this to myself? An angel who has forsaken sympathy Rise up, young boy, and make yourself Godzilla